Hello everyone, Muckle at Douglas Spot, me Original Esquire the Fourth here, and this is a guide aimed at showing you how to craft PvE Tier 1 Obsidian Legendary Armor. This is the armor crafted from open world activities. If you are interested in making legendary armor via the other methods of raiding, PvP, or World v World, you can find those in this video, which I will link down below. Let's get started. First off, why would you want legendary armor? Legendary gear has the same stats as ascended gear. This means if you have a piece of ascended gear with power, precision, and ferocity on it, and a legendary gear with those same three stats, the numbers will be the same. However, the legendary gear can swap to other stats at any time you are out of combat. This means that you can use that armor piece with every gear set you own or aim to own, and it can always have the desired stats on all of your characters that can use that type of armor. Additionally, when you replace a rune or infusion on a legendary item, the old one pops off instead of getting deleted, which can save a lot of cash if you swap builds often. What does Tier 1 mean? Tier 1 Obsidian armor is legendary. It has all of the quality of life options that legendaries include. Tier 2, which is not yet out at the time of this recording, will reportedly have fancier visuals and more die channels. So you can make Tier 1 and stop there, or later upgrade to Tier 2 if you like the visual effects on it. First step is deciding which piece we are making. Armor comes in light, medium, and heavy varieties, so start with whichever armor type your main characters will get the most use out of. Each piece requires very slightly different materials, but for the purposes of this video, we will make obsidian medium armor boots to show the process. Now a legendary is a long-term project. Chip away at it slowly, working on it a little each day over time, and get it done without feeling like you need to do everything all at once. Seriously, if you've never seen this list of ingredients, you are going to be mind blown. I cannot stress enough that this is a long-term project. Don't get dissuaded. We're going to visit this website. This shows the shopping list we need to fulfill to make our item, with a few things on the list varying based Based on which piece we choose to make. You can see on this table of ingredients that each one requires four major items. Gift of Mighty Prosperity or Gift of Magical Prosperity, Gift of Expertise, Gift of Stormy Skies, and Arcanum of Astral Armor for the armor that you wish to make. Any of the ingredients you need you can click on on this page to see where they are from, but let's go over this list and explain them for those with questions. I will have timestamps on the video for those looking for something specific. Provisioner tokens are obtained from faction provisioners throughout the game. Each provisioner will trade you a limited number of times each day, so you can find a trade that is favorable to you and just do those each day, or do a great many trades all in one day to get this done faster. Once you have 50 tokens, trade them back to any provisioner for a gift of craftsmanship. Note, the tokens are stored in your wallet if you need to check. Nine Mystic Clovers. These are from the Wizard's Vault, Strike Merchants, Raid Merchants, Fractal Merchants, and a few other various locations throughout the game. If none of those work for you, check the Mystic Clover page for even more options. Next up, we need to make a gift of condensed might or magic. If you are making the head, shoulder, or chest armor, you need magic. If you're making hand, leg, or foot armor, you need might. Since I am making boots, that means that we are making the gift of condensed might. I will need to make the gifts of fangs, bones, claws, and scales for might, or blood, totems, venom, and dust for magic. If you have a crafter, you can make these yourself, or Lear can do it for the slightly higher cost of 10 ectos per craft. Next is Gift of Research. This is made with 250 thermocatalytic reagents. They are easy, just buy them from a master craftsman. Next is 500 hydrocatalytic reagents. These also come from a master craftsman, but they are purchased with... <sighs> research notes. If you don't already know how to get research notes, you basically take crafted items and break them down into notes. They are easy to acquire but slightly tedious. I have a guide on some simple ways to get research notes I will link down below if you need them. Next up in this batch is a stack of Essence of Luck, the exotic variety. If you don't have luck saved up, here's a few tips. Save all luck you get, and get a character with level 1 artificing. A level 1 artificer can combine luck into its larger forms, allowing you to merge smaller lucks into the kind you need. If you are really in a rush, you can salvage a bunch of ectoplasms, sell most of the materials to get back some of the cost, and keep the luck for your needs. Once you are done with the steps up to this point, combine the Gift of Craftsmanship, close gift of research, and the gift of condensed might or magic to make the gift of mighty or magical prosperity. Next 
next up, we need to get a large pile of essences of despair, greed, and triumph. These are obtained primarily from either rift hunting or convergences, both of which I have videos on, which I will link down below. For those who are new and haven't watched those videos yet, rift hunting can be done solo or in groups, and convergences are a large-scale group activity. So choose whichever you like to do more and get those essences. As you acquire enough essences, you can convert them into amalgamated cryptus essences. These can be combined by nearly any crafting profession, or you can have Lear combine them, but he will add on a 10 ectoplasm additional fee for having him do it. You will need 12 amalgamated cryptus essences per armor piece. Next, you need an Eldritch Scroll. This is purchased from the merchants next to each Mystic Forge for 50 spirit shards. 50 Obsidian Shards. Obsidian Shards have hundreds of ways of obtaining them. If you do not have enough of these, I encourage you to check the Obsidian Shard page on the wiki and pick a method that appeals to you in order to pick some up. Some examples are Silver Waste Bandit Chess, PvP, World v. World, Unbound Magic Vendors, and many more. Cube of Stabilized Dark Energy. This is crafted by combining 75 stabilizing matrices. These come from fractals, but are tradable, so you can get them on the trading post from other players. And a ball of dark energy, which is obtained from salvaging a piece of ascended equipment. It is guaranteed from armor or weapons, but it is only a chance from most other items. Once again, if you do not have the crafting skill, Lear can combine the cube for you for 10 ectos. Once you have the cube, obsidian shards, eldritch scroll, and the 12 amalgamated cryptus essences, combine them in the mystic forge to make a Gift of Expertise. Next up, Gift of Skywatch Archipelago comes from completing map comp for Skywatch Archipelago for the first time, or lighting all the lamps in Skywatch to get it additional times on the same character. Likewise, the Gift of Amnitus comes from the Amnitus map completion, or lighting all the lamps in Amnitus to get this done additional times. At the time of recording this, the Gift of Interneos may be acquired differently than when you see this video in the future. If Intermayonnaise has been fully released, it will probably be the same, where you do full map comp or light all the lamps. As it stands at the moment I record this, the map is not fully out, so lighting the lamps or doing story achievements is the only way to acquire the gift of Inner Naos at this time. Finally, for this batch, we need a gift of persistence. This comes from combining 250 unusual coins, static charges, pinches of stardust, and calcified gasps. You can farm the meta events and treasure chests in the various zones of Secrets of the Obscure to acquire these. Static charges from Skywatch, stardust from Amnitas, and gas from Inner Naos, and coins from all. Or do alt parking if you are feeling patient like I did. If you would like a list of locations to park your alts where you can log into them, spend 10 seconds opening a box each day to get some of this currency, and then log out out and then slowly get this done over time for low effort, I will link a guide to that down below. Once you get the coins, charges, stardust, and gasps, you can purchase the gift of persistence from Lear in his Harry Potter closet under the stairs in the Wizard's Tower. Then combine the gift of persistence, Interneos, Amnitas, and Skywatch Archipelago to make a gift of the Astral Ward in the Mystic Forge. Next, we need five cases of captured lightning. When you complete the meta in Skywatch, you can choose a case of captured lightning lightning as your reward, or you can spend 250 static charges to buy a case of captured lightning from a faction provisioner in Skywatch. Once again, I used a part alt acquiring static charges over time to purchase these to reduce how often I had to do the meta. Five pouches of stardust. Optional reward from the Amnitus meta or can be purchased for 250 pinches of stardust from a faction provisioner in Amnitas. Once again, I basically got this through a part alt over time. Five clots of congealed screams. Optional reward from Inner Naos meta or can be purchased for 250 calcified gasps, who names these things, from a faction provisioner in Naos. Once again, I basically got this through a parked alt over time. Combine the gift of the Astral Ward with the five cases of captured lightning, pouches of stardust, and clots of congealed screams to make the gift of stormy skies in the Mystic Forge. The fourth and final major part is the Arcanum. To make this, open your achievement search panel and look for the word Astral. You will want to do the Astral Stride, Bearing, Grasp, Heartbeat, Thought, or footprints depending on the armor piece you're trying to make. For our example, we are going to do the footprints, which is for the boots. To complete this, we have to do four small steps. Let's start with the second one, which is the Rift Hunter piece of armor. The Rift Hunter set is given to you as free rewards for various steps of the Soto main story. You may already have the full set unlocked if you have played the story before starting this project without having even tried to. It can also be obtained from the Amnitas gearbox from the Soto reward track in PvP and World v. World. Next is the Astral Ward and Anairo spun versions of the same item. 
boots in this case. These are sold by Lear. First off, you can buy the light, medium, or heavy versions of this, and it will get checked off. So pick whichever you prefer. It doesn't matter. It will give you the skins for all three. To purchase the two items from Lear, you will need some purified Cryptus Essence, a gift of something. Example, if it is Gift of Claws, it is made with a bunch of claws by various crafters or by Lear for Tenectos. And two items from a Soto map meta, or exchanged for 250 of their smaller versions. Yet again, I got this from Parked Alts. And research notes, everybody's favorite. The only new item here to talk about is Purified Cryptus Essence. This is made by combining an amalgamated Cryptus Essence with one Mystic Clover by a crafter or having Lear do it for 10 Ectos more. The fourth and final task for your astral whatever step is to hunt down a named target in Sautau. Which one will depend on the item you are working on? For example, for the boots, I had to go hunt down Myros the Spiteful. Use the wiki to find your target. Most of them are associated with a specific event, then you can just check their area occasionally until you find the event up and kill them. Once you have the achievement complete, you will be able to go back to Lear, and you now have his permission to purchase the Arcanum of Astral whatever you were doing for one Lesser Vision Crystal. These can be salvaged randomly from Ascended Armors, a few various story steps throughout the game, crafted by crafters or crafted by Lear for 10 extra Ectos. <sighs> Once you have your Arcanum, you are finally ready to combine it with the Gift of Stormy Skies, the Gift of Expertise, and the Gift of Mighty or Magical Prosperity we made earlier. This combination can be done at Lear's Forge or the associated crafting table, such as tailoring for light armor, or Lear can make it for 10 bucks. I, I mean, Ectos. No. From speaking with many other players, it appears to allow you to craft it in the Wizard's Tower and not other locations in the world at the time of this recording. Finally, after all this work, you have got a full set of legendary ar- Oh. Well. One down, five to go. Or 17 to go if you're making all three armor sets. But no one is that crazy, right? Holy f Remember, if you unlock the item, it will go into your legendary armory and can be used on every build template of every character that can use it. So, which one are we building next? Remember that I have links to all of the steps in the description below. Use them if you need more details. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm, comment if you have any questions or if you know any tricks and tips that I didn't share, and subscribe to the channel if you would love to see more content. Another massive thank you to the supporters on Patreon, Twitch, and YouTube who keep this channel alive, and if you are interested in becoming one and getting more videos and perks, there's a link to that in the description. Shilling complete, thanks for listening, and happy crafting.